From Nutrient Ag Solutions, this is Senior Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard with your Canadian Prairie Weather Story for Monday, April 4th, 2022. Checking with temperatures here first thing, mild air across much of the prairie through much of the week before we get a shot of colder air this weekend into early next week. As we look at the last seven days of precipitation, it's continued to be very dry across much of the prairie down into the northern plains of the U.S. We've seen weak little clipper systems make their way over the top of the little, uh, the little, <laughs> the big ridge that's been sitting over the Pacific, the West Coast, parts of Western Canada at times. Again, just kind of flinging clipper systems up here, delivering light doses of snow generally to the Highway 16 corridor with scattered very light totals south of that here. Again, this pattern has been really what's driven things over the last few weeks, over the last couple of months. It's a parade of storm systems, and that's what I've been mentioning here. The pattern is active. It's just not a very good pattern for precipitation across the prairie, but we can look at the satellite picture here. Storm number one. We've got another system right here. Here's a system that's going to be bringing some precipitation to the prairie here early this week. There's even another little low down here across Baja, California. But the parade of systems continues across North America, and the question remains, will we cash in on that here across the Canadian prairie? So you look at the radar picture, some precipitation across British Columbia, parts of the Pacific Northwest here early on Monday morning. Again, the system will make its way into the prairie as we head through the next 60 to 72 hours. This is what that looks like from the wrap model. I'm going to try out some new graphics here. I'm messing with a new platform here that'll help me display some of these weather graphics, but also get some of our cities on here. All the maps I show here, you kind of have to, you know, guesstimate where you're located. So hopefully this helps. It's not going to be perfect at first here, but I'll start working some of these in here to the video. But using our wrap model, we can track the storm system here over the next couple of days. Let me go ahead and we'll let it start over here. This is your quiet Monday. Head through the day today, maybe some light showers popping up across parts of Alberta into far southwest Saskatchewan. This is what it could look like around 7 p.m. Again, this is the forecast model simulated radar, so exact results will vary. But here's what it looks like here as we get into 7 p.m. We'll take this through the overnight, and then we start to work some colder air in as we get into Tuesday. Colder air comes in on the backside here. We start to transition over to snow on Tuesday. And we're going to set up a band here somewhere along the Alberta-Saskatchewan border. We're going to dump some you know, locally heavy snowfall here, talking about maybe 15 to uh, 20 centimeters here, 15 to 20 millimeters of total liquid precipitation. But this is your 10 a.m. forecast on Tuesday morning. Strong winds coming in on the backside here. So maybe some disruptive conditions, again, across this general corridor, Tuesday into Wednesday. This is as we get into Tuesday evening. We warm up through the afternoon into the evening, maybe transitioning back over to rain, a wintry mix here. We head into the overnight, transitioning back over to all snow. And this band continues to just kind of sit right here along the border. This is now sunrise on Wednesday morning. Precipitation still coming down across this area. The low continues off to the south and east. And as we get into Wednesday, we'll start bringing some of the heavier snow into parts of southern, uh, um, southern Manitoba. There we go. As we get into a Wednesday morning. So, you know, 9 p.m. Tuesday, heavy snow across this region. You could pick out some of the cities here, generally from, we'll call it maybe Edmonton down toward Regina, but Edmonton and Regina, uh, you know, specifically maybe on the western and eastern edges there. It's going to be between that corridor here uh, where we'll see the heavier snowfall again late Tuesday. Getting into early Wednesday, this is what it looks like here, 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. That heavy snow still falling, at least in a localized corridor here, and that is where we expect to see the heaviest snow. I'll show you a couple of forecasts here. This is the NAM model total precipitation, so just total liquid precip. Here's that heavy corridor along the Alberta-Saskatchewan border, and then here is where we dump some of the heavier precipitation across southern Manitoba as well. Both of these, we're talking... 15 to 25, maybe locally higher, 15 to 25 millimeters here, and then a good chunk of that falling as snow, with again the heaviest snow, 10 to 20 centimeters, maybe some locally uh, heavier amounts here. Again, the heavy snow is going to be in a, a fairly localized corridor here along the Alberta Saskatchewan border, with some heavier snow here across southern Alberta, generally Highway 16 south, Winnipeg, Brandon, Winkler. You're going to see some of that heavier snow, 10 to 20 centimeters, as we get into Wednesday as well. Finally, side by side, the uh, NAM model on the left, and then here is the European model. We see good agreement there with the two heaviest corridors being right here across, again, the Alberta-Saskatchewan border. Heavy snowfall there across uh, parts of southwestern Saskatchewan. That's where I think we could see a pocket of heavier snow totals maybe surpassing 20 centimeters. And then the same story across southern Alberta, I'm sorry, southern Manitoba as we get into Tuesday night, Wednesday, maybe even into early on Thursday. Now, as we look at the next 10 days, 
you know, you can pick out your storm system this week, a good dose of that right here, but we do bring additional chances in through the rest of the week, especially into next weekend, early next week. And that's, you notice this big corridor. I'm not exactly sold on where this happens, but this is a symptom of the upcoming pattern change. One that is going to usher in a much more favorable trajectory with our active pattern. The pattern stays active. It's been active, but it's been active, but unlucky for the prairie. I'm hoping we swing from that to active and cashing in on a couple of these. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll head through the week. Again, look off across the Pacific. You see it ridging here, troughing there. This is extremely fast jet stream flow, loaded with little disturbances, and it's, you know, essentially just going to be uh, firing these off across North America. It's going to be a very volatile pattern across the, the prairie all the way into parts of the United States here. We'll continue very active. Let me go ahead and animate this. Uh, and show you what I'm talking about. So here's the first system. Here's your, your system early this week. Sneaks through. This is now Tuesday, getting into Wednesday. Remember, I, I was saying we need these systems to go to the south of us. They're coming over the top of the ridge, and we're getting rain shadowed on the south side of that. Well, look what's happening finally. We get early this week. This one's diving off to the south. So we do bring some snow into this area. It's, you know, a couple pockets of it. We're not going to cover the entire prairie in 20 centimeters of snow, but we're going to get a couple pockets there. Let's see what happens as we head through the end of the week. We're going to see mild conditions return as this low kind of bombs out and stalls across parts of the Midwest. It's going to be very cold and dreary where I'm recording this video down here in Illinois. We'll see some ridging, warmer and drier conditions as we head into the end of the week. But here you go. Here comes the next system. We'll follow the trajectory here. This one sneaks in here as we get into next weekend, trying to dive south once again and follow that more southerly trajectory. We'll see another low, kind of another piece of that breaking off and diving way south before then potentially lifting off to the north and to the east early next week. Now we are getting into kind of that uh, day 7 to 10, lower reliability here, but this is a pattern that's been well advertised here. Uh, for for some time and it's got implications across the US and Canada because once again there's that southern track that is what is producing that heavy swath of snow I showed you on the 10-day forecast now where exactly the system tracks that's going to dictate where that heavy corridor of snow is uh, going to fall so what I want to show you here is the pattern as we head into mid-April remains active but this is the storm track that we need to see if we're going to be producing, you know, cashing in, I should say, on a couple of these uh, storm systems as we head through April. I know we're getting toward the end of it and, uh, you know, getting into spring. And we're going to start talking about some, uh, you know, soggy conditions as we start to thaw. But, boy, as we talk about late winter, early spring, cashing in on a, a you know, a wide corridor of some snowfall here, this would be how we would do it. So let's finish here. Let's look at the European precipitation forecast, knowing that as we get into days 7 to 10 and beyond, we're going to lose some confidence here in the specifics. But here's your early system early this week. You can see it moving across the prairie here, taking its time. As we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, you see that other little low develop here across Manitoba and Minnesota. That's why we get that second corridor of heavier snow in southern Manitoba. We get that quiet period here late week. We're going to be warmer as this low dives down here across the Midwest and we wait for the next system to come in over the weekend. Now again, where does the weekend system track? That will dictate where we get some uh, weekend precipitation, some heavier precip. Right now, the models may be taking that right across the heart of the prairie, perhaps the heaviest snow north of the region. But, you know, this is a, a multi-piece evolution here over the weekend into early next week because then we get early next week, potentially that next system coming in. This is the one that could really dump some heavy snowfall somewhere across the northern plains of the U.S. into the Canadian prairie. And my point is, as we head into mid-April, we got to just watch this thing. And, and, and fingers crossed, we cash in on a couple of these systems because this is the look we've been waiting for for much of the winter and, you know, first month of uh, spring. Temperatures, again, mild as we head through the late part of the week. Big shot of cold air coming, though, as we get into the weekend. Again, as we develop that big trough here, you know, we want to try and bring storms in from the south. To do that, though, you know, we're going to be on the cold side of this storm track. So enjoy the warmth right now. It will be trending colder as we head later on into the, the middle part of the month here, you know, past days five into days 10. Calgary, here's your next 10 days. High temperatures here getting up to near 20 degrees late week. It's short-lived, though. Colder temperatures for the weekend into early next week. Saskatoon, here you go, Regina. We're going to end this video before 10 minutes. Hope you have a wonderful Monday, a great rest of your week. We'll continue to watch things here as we head through the weekend into early next week, potentially 
a much more favorable precipitation pattern for us here across the prairie.